Or recently, movements like hashtag MeToo have made headlines encouraging women to find strength and have their voices heard. A motivational author in Hawaii has been spreading that message and has a book that helps women of all ages. Joining us now is Dr. Loretta Chen, motivational author, creative entrepreneur, and adjunct instructor at Argosy University. Good morning and welcome. I'm very excited to hear about these books. <laughs> Good morning, Christine. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. But first of all, you are a creative executive mm -hmm. and then you became an author. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> well, quite by chance because I, well, well, you're absolutely right. I was a creative uh, executive and I was working uh, for brands like Samsung, mm -hmm. uh, for Louis Vuitton, uh, also for uh, the Worldwide Fund and various other brands. And um, in 2014, I decided that I really wanted to move back to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, I, you were I in did, Singapore? Yes. Okay. And, and I was a grad student and I, I did grad school in the mainland. And I always wanted to come back to Hawaii. So I decided I was going to you know, take that leap of faith and, and do that. And while I was doing that, I realized I, re I still wanted to stay connected and create. But being a director meant that I had to be in the country or in wherever I was. But mm -hmm. I was traveling so much. So writing enabled me to work by remote. And, and, and so it's, it's happened now for four years. Years and I'm on to my fourth book now, and it's been it's been a fascinating journey. And yeah. tell us about the title of your fourth book and what it's about. Uh, the fourth book is actually called Mana Wahine, Power Women in Hawaii. But I think uh, what we really wanted to, to what started off was Woman on Top, which was my first book. Mm -hmm. And Woman on Top really started because uh, I was really inspired by um, yeah, that's it. I was really <laughs> inspired by stories of of. Um, people and how they thrived under obstacles. They didn't allow obstacles to be in the way, but they allowed the obstacle to be the way and lead the way. Mm. And, and I started getting very inspired and I thought I wanted to write a, a book to encapsulate all these stories, to, to inspire people, to dare to dare, uh, to believe in the redemptive power of, of failure and also uh, just to keep inspiring them. So that was how Woman on Top um, really came about. Now, is, it says one on top, and you talk about people, so <laughs> can it apply to men too? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. You know, I, I really think that uh, in, in today's day and age, what we really need is to have a community, to have dialogue. I think back in the day, most women uh, tended to just hide and shame and just mm -hmm. not talk about uh, personal failures. But I think today's culture uh, with social media enables us to, to talk, and I think that's very empowering, and that's something that we, we should all embrace. You want to tell women who are watching out there who might not feel as strong, or even um, uh, girls who are in their teenage years who are, are, are going through some struggles right now? No, absolutely right. I mean, I, I think one of my biggest inspirations was my niece. You know, she's bullied in school, and, and I really wanted to. Initially, I wanted to, to write the book for her to tell her that, you know, um, to, to, to not be afraid and embrace failure because. Most times that is our, our biggest guiding tool, right? I, I think for no, even though I'm in the business of motivating and, and in leadership, I realize that no motivational guidebook or no uh, motivational guru can help you if you don't take accountability for your own failure. So, and I remember a, a really powerful saying by Eleanor Roosevelt who said, uh, that nobody should make you feel inferior without your consent. I, mm. I think the first and foremost is to be accountable for our own actions. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to all the women and men out there, I think uh, to embrace the redemptive power of, of failure, to recognize that you're not alone, and that uh, for, for everything that you feel, there is someone else out there that feels the same. And if you allow yourself to share your story, you begin to build a community, and you don't realize how powerful that might start. I mean, like what you said, the Me Too movement started with a single action, and it's become an entire movement. And speaking of the Me Too movement, do you feel as if things are getting better? I mean, back in the day I when I was growing oh. up, you didn't have things like that. People weren't talking about Absolutely. Um, these kinds of issues, and you had nowhere to, to go almost, right? Absolutely. I mean, this is something that I didn't think that we'll talk about right now. But yes, I mean, even I went through a similar thing when I was younger, and a very young professor. Um, it was something that I went through at work. I was sexually harassed at work by, by another male co uh, co-worker, and they said that this couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. and, and I was silenced as well. My voice was silenced. Um, and I definitely think that representation matters. I definitely think that it's really important for us to speak out and, and, and uh, I think social media, um, even though it has its double-edged sword, I think it's enabled a lot of young people to mm -hmm. take control and to have a voice mm -hmm. and to say that uh, my voice matters in a way that back in the day, traditional media would, would have a way of, 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 of segregating um, the, the mainstream media and, and the masses, but today I think those those overlaps have really sort of, uh, ha those worlds have, have begun to overlap, and mm -hmm. I think now people are beginning to dare to speak up, and representation really matters. Don't be afraid, yeah. don't feel embarrassed, and if you feel like you're failing, it's, it's okay. Don't it be ashamed. It right? completely is okay. Yeah, it's one of the things that I wrote about in my book, too, that I think before we can even encourage a leadership mindset, I think what I realize with a lot of leaders is before they can even have a leadership mindset and attitude, um, the one thing they have is a lot of mindfulness and self-awareness, or what I call 
call the three P's, uh, to have positionality, to know where you're at, to know who you're at uh, and who you are about, uh, to have perspective, to understand the world outside of you, and also to have self-reflexivity uh, or personal reflexivity, which is different from just being reflective because you're able to take action even as you reflect. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all these things uh, encourage a, a, a mindfulness that, that can only allow us to become more grateful and compassionate and, and wise every day, which can only lead to a more positive outlook towards life. I think it's really important. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Loretta Chen, Thank for you stopping so much by for, for the books. Uh, <laughs> very powerful message. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christine. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, just a quick reminder, if you know someone who wants to go to college, you can enter Argosy University's scholarship contest. One lucky winner will be chosen to receive a $10,000 scholarship. Head over to KHON2.com for contest details and for the nomination form.